but I haven't got my coffee. Oh, it doesn't matter. They'll be ready in a moment. They'll all be in here chatting away, and these are the topics that they'll be chatting about. First one tonight. Hines is not on the panel tonight. He's just helping to set up. I'm up against some bitch at my husband's work who's got, who's got her sights set on breaking up my family of 11 years. Ooh, first letter tonight. Second letter tonight. Our entire society is now too accepting of this horribly unhealthy state. I hope they're not talking about New South Wales. I reckon they're talking about... Yes, mate, that's right. And he won't be here when the panellists are in. Have I won the booby prize in a raffle? I don't know whether I've been in a nanny relationship or a... Or it's just a product of the Y generation. They're all wanting when it comes to life skills is going out with someone much younger than him, obviously. All this a terrific load of panellists when we come back in about 20 seconds. Don't go away. Heinz won't be here. I promise. I promise. I really do. I promise. I promise. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch Cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour Right here on Sweet and Sour Pour some sugar on me baby It's time for Sweet and Sour How's it going, sir? It's there time for Sweet and Sour Good evening everyone Thank you and welcome to Sweet and Sour Gary Mitchell with you for the next half an hour First up tonight Happy birthday Vincenzo Grazie tanto Tw 21 tomorrow Absolutely What are you doing to celebrate? Sneaking away for the weekend and with my favourite girl. Oh, does your wife know about it? <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, mate. I've got a letter going? from my wife. You got a letter from <laughs> you, Where are you going? Are we allowed to ask? Yes, we're going down to a beautiful home in uh, Rivendell Estate, uh, hidden in the forest, uh, lighting the fire, roasting some chestnuts. Oh, it sounds fantastic. Oh, yeah, it should be great. Happy birthday, mate. Thank you for being on the show the night before Thank your birthday. You. Thank you. Pleasure. Are you going to sing to Vince? <laughs> you didn't hear the chestnut joke, did you? Boom, boom, uh, no. We kept it off there. Yeah, we did, we did. Do you want me to sing to him? Yes, yeah, sing. Come sing, on. Sing do you want cabaret? Me. you want Marilyn? What do you want? In the available 30 seconds, anything okay. that you can okay. do that's really quick. I'll be happy birthday. To you. And moving right along because we're running out of time. <laughs> Happy birthday, Vincent. Hello, Jules. Hello, Gav. Where have you been? I've been everywhere, man. No, that song no, too. Do you want yeah. to sing that one? No, <laughs> I don't like that one. Where have you been? You know, just doing stuff. Started on a new business. What are you doing? I'm teaching people how to use their Macs and their Apple software and their iDevices. Are you a technocrat? I'm a bit of a tech person, yes. Wow, that's a so huge business. So I can business. show you how to use your iPad. Or your iPod or your i anything. I'm a, a moron when it comes to anything. Yeah, most people are. No, I, I'm a moron. Oh, I, Apple and I can turn you into a, not a moron. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Lukey, I know you've been everywhere, mm -hmm. man. Where are you coming back from? Uh, I've just come back from America where I had my business teaching people how to use eye patches. Uh, <laughs> a little easier, a little easier. So that was good. Yeah. What were you doing in America? Uh, I went over for uh, WrestleMania 28 uh, did down you in really? Miami. Yeah, yeah, I was third row to see The Rock take on John Cena, and while I was over there, did some stand up comedy gigs, so Where'd kept myself perform? busy. Uh, Orlando, uh, Tampa, New York, all around the place. Fantastic. Good time. Nice to have you back on the show, mate. Thank you. It's good to be here. Here we back. go, guys. Dear Mitch and Guests, it takes two to tango. I was always told my family believe it. Whether it's a dance, a fight, or a love tryst, there aren't two participants. If there aren't two participants, it doesn't happen. I had a man chase me and chase me to return his affections. Initially, I made the mistake of feeling a little sorry for him, but he interpreted that sentiment for something that made him think he had a chance with me. The moment I decided not to worry about hurting his feelings and treated him with complete neutrality, he lost interest and left. I wasn't hurtful, just unemotive towards him, so I understand how it works. Now I'm up against some bitch at my husband's work who has her sights set on wrecking my family and stealing him away from me after 11 years of marriage. I'm not stupid. If he didn't have an inclination towards her, none of this would, would be happening. If he did as I did when uh, I was in that position and treated her coldly, this would not be an issue. So my issue is my husband. He's obviously not as strong as me. This other woman obviously feels she has some sort of chance. Now if my best friend uh, didn't work with my husband, I wouldn't know any of this. So knowing hubby is a wimp, 
What can or should I do to put an end to this workplace cavorting and rid my family of this woman? Comes to us from Barbara of Maddington in WA Jewels. One mm. woman takes on another woman. Yes, and the husband's Barbara. not saying anything. No, and her best friend that... works in the workplace with the yeah. husband. Oh, yes. Well, is she really a best friend? Well, this is this, this real? I was thinking about that, but you know, um, I don't think you can call your husband a wimp. Something is he's chasing something, Barbara. Maybe you are not giving him what he needs mm. at home. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So um, I know what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> Vince knows I, what she's saying. <laughs> it's very easy. You know, you've been together for 11 years and you probably, he gets home from work and you talk about the mortgage and the electricity bills and the kids and la la la. And maybe this woman at work's just giving that little bit of spice that he's missing out on at home. Maybe it's not real. Well, it's not real because it's an escape from, from the troubles and the woes at home. And I think maybe... Maybe you should try and be a little more um, exciting. Maybe, I mean, it's not real and it's not really happening and her best friend... Oh, you think the best... Oh, see, no, I'm not that devious. I don't think like that. Well, maybe it's the best friend. Well... She's a woman in the workplace at her husband's work. But whoever the woman is, it's irrelevant. The ah. husband is looking for something he's not getting at home. I believe. Lukey? What's he looking for? Well, I've got to tell you, Maddington is uh, my local shop, so I've got to tell you, if your name's Barbara and you live in Maddington, there is a 90% chance you're a hideous chud. Uh, <laughs> it's true. I don't like to make snap judgments, but I you, think we all know You even made Hines laugh on that one. True. <laughs> I, I think, though, that if it's a little workplace thing, it's pretty harmless. Like, we all have those people at our workplace that, you know, we flirt with, we say nice things, we flash them a smile, we send them pictures of our penis. It's perfectly normal. <laughs> and I think she's just, she's, she's getting a little over the top over this. I don't think it's anything to get worried about. <laughs> no, I agree. Nothing. When did you last receive a picture of someone's penis? Um, just, just before we got here. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Julie sent it to you, right? <laughs> Vincenzo, Pepe. what's your take on this one? Barbara, is she really a best friend? Yeah. I don't know. She might be just testing you out just to see what you think. And maybe she's really up for it. And your poor husband is just as innocent as the day he was born. Ooh. And you've hung, drawn and quartered him. And it's just your girlfriend who wants him. Oh, grow up, darling. You're, if you're really in love with him, he'll really be in love with you. Make sure it's all about the two of you. Forget about the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll Aww. keep it strong. Love each other. Yeah, if you're insecure, you can feel threatened by absolutely everything. You That's know? what it sounds like to me. Uh, Mitch, I think she's just got it all going on in her own head, this but girl. But her friend, who works with the husband, has put it there. Well, yeah, but, you know, like, even her saying that she was talking to some guy and then she was cold with him, she, she said I'm not stupid, but she sounds a bit stupid to me. If it's real... What do you do? You do nothing anyway? If it's real. Yeah? If it's real and something happens, there's nothing anyone can do about it. You're no, she, just going to happen. She can go back to the original bloke that she gave a miss to and just pick gonna. up on it. <laughs> then, just then, tick, tick for tat. <laughs> what do you reckon, Barbara? I think there Doris Day said it. Que sera, sera. Que sera, sera. Will sera, be. sera. Mm. Whatever will be, will be. Mm. OK. I don't know whether we've given Barbara any heads up on anything there. Well, she hasn't really got a problem. It's all in the head. head. Yeah, yeah. And, a yeah. and a girlfriend. And a girlfriend. And a girlfriend. Your girlfriend. All right, guys, quick one. If you saw your best friend's missus playing around, or vice versa, your best friend's bloke playing around, would you tell him? No. Vince says no? No, but I'd talk to the person that was playing around. Oh, okay. That's what I'd do. Here and I think the same. Mm, no wonder you're mates. <laughs> I would tell them to watch the movie The Dilemma with uh, Vince Vaughn and Kevin James and say, pick up the subtle hints in that one because that's the plot of that film. <laughs> Never be the messenger of bad news. Mm, yeah, you get shot in the end. When we come back, we're talking about are we too accepting of things in our society today, including this. What's I that? I object, I don't accept that. Fatty Bumbas. <laughs> when we come back, don't go away. See you soon. Fatty Bumbas. <laughs>like to send us a letter, send it to the address that's appearing on your screen right now. There it is, letters at sweetandsour.net.au and for every letter that we receive and we think good enough to read out, we're going to send you to the movies 
courtesy of the very gorgeous Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. There's the movie, Bel Ami. Does anybody know anything about it? Robert Pattinson, isn't it? Yeah, it's a blockbuster apparently, Vince. Is that right? I find it so like boring. It. I think it's a bit sexy. It's about a friend of mine. Is it sexy? Do you know we're also on Facebook now? No, I didn't have know. You given it, have you given us a like on Facebook yet? I th actually, I think I have. I think I'm asleep. You have? have okay. You okay. His so, hands? Robert Pattinson's hands? No. His hands? Look at them next Why would time. you be looking at his hands? Because they're really, really little like in comparison to him. And he's always, he's always fiddling with himself. It's strange. Yeah, they say it's little very hands. Uh, Robert Pattinson's a giant wanker. Uh, <laughs> The there, we go. there we go. Mm. Hi, panelists. My fat little grandson, who is all of 10 years of age, has a girlfriend at school. I've been trying to convince his mum, my daughter in law, that it's not healthy for kids to be fat at an early age because it makes it much harder as they grow to be anything other than fat and unhealthy. I just realised, however, that our entire society is now too accepting of this horribly unhealthy state. When I was growing up, there were not many fat kids and they were encouraged to get healthy. They certainly wouldn't be able to attract a boy or girlfriend. Now it seems that everyone is so fat it doesn't matter and kids no longer discourage fatness among, amongst themselves. So everyone must be fat and comfortable. What chance has this next generation to li of living to a healthy old age if the healthy messages put out by the government are going to be ignored because the kids are too happy with their fat little selves? How can I motivate my daughter-in-law before it's too late for her kids? Panda of Prospect... South Australia. Panda, I wonder how big she is. Goodness me. Lukey, are you going to panda to this woman? I got to say, uh, I, I kind of agree with Panda, and uh, I, I, I had this fear that, you know, I've got a daughter myself that she was going to grow up to be fat, and I think that you can't let those bad habits form. So from a young age, I was right in her face, and I'd say, look, do you really need to drink that much breast milk? Do you know how many calories are in that? And it backfired a little because I ended up with a nine month old bulimic, but I think that, you know, she'll come right in the end. <laughs> how old is your daughter now? Uh, my daughter is 18 months old. 18 months old, no issues here yet? Well, she's been to rehab a couple of times, but she's getting over it. <laughs> come on, Jules. Well, Panda, Panda, Panda. An interesting name. Um, I think you're exaggerating. Um, not everyone is fat, and you know, fifty percent of the Australian population. Yes, they is are. Fat, but, but fat kids at school, I know because I work in primary schools, still get teased. You work everywhere. Fat. I know. <laughs> got three million businesses. I have my gonna... arms everywhere. I do. But I teach dancing in schools. Got... One well, of those Indian many. goddesses. And um, million arms. <laughs> and yeah, look, there are fat kids, but they do get teased, and they are very self-conscious. Now. I totally agree with, with Panda. Her daughter-in-law really has got to get her shit together. She cannot be feeding this child bad food. I had, the other day, in a staff room, a teacher had taken a photograph of a kid's lunchbox mm. and it was atrocious. There was packets of tiny teddies, packets of chips, packets of grain waves, packets of... There was no fruit, there was no fresh salad sandwiches, there was nothing. And it was, it's just atrocious. And I think we're time poor and we think, oh, we'll just throw all this crap in our kids' lunchbox. We need to start making our kids healthy, nutritious food. It doesn't take that long. How and hard is it to do that? It's not that hard at all. You just have to put some time aside and do it. You have to do it. It's really, really important. And Panda, get on your daughter-in-law's case because you're absolutely right. Nola, when you were at school, did the fat kids have girlfriends and boyfriends? I was just going to say, uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to go... What planet is she living on? Because everyone I know is chucking up or got eating disorders or... So, you might be a little chubby while you're at school, but, you know, if, if this daughter-in-law is feeding him all right or whatever, he does have a girlfriend, a little, little, little cuddly little thing that he is. Do you know, I've got a girlfriend whose um, boyfriend was really fat when they were little and he's so beautiful now, so... So they'll grow out of it? Yeah. Um, does everybody I, grow out of it? I don't know, but you know... No, this this woman you know, is worried that her daughter-in-law feed... is feeding the kids unhealthily. Oh, I don't know. She's a daughter-in-law. so You can't so... tell your daughter-in-law anything anyway. Well, can? it's a mother-in-law too. So, look, you might have a little chubby... I've got a new little chubby grandson and I just love him to death and he is just on breast milk. And, uh, look, uh, I'm scared at the moment because there's all oh. these beautiful beautiful skinny people on the magazines and then you, there's one lot of people doing that and there's the fat people. It's kind of like fat and skinny had a bath. Go on. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you know what I mean? It's a bit like, it's a bit like if you feed your children healthily, if you give them a good lunches, if it's a bit chubby, I, I'm scared to say anything about anyone's weight at the moment. There's just too many problems with it. Too many problems. I'm All right. the buck. Birthday boy, what are you doing tomorrow to celebrate? Are you going to 
have a, a huge meal. And are you going to do the cooking? I'm going to be doing some of the cooking, of course. Oh, Absolutely. Right. Healthy? Healthy? Uh, no, some of it's going to be ridiculously fattening. Oh, oh delicious. But Break fattening the doesn't necessarily mean unhealthy, though, does it? No, at the end of the day, you just make sure that you make up for it. But this letter worries me no end. Uh, it, it is an indictment of society. I can't believe Panda, wake up. You're a grandmother. First of all, you're blaming your daughter. I mean, you, you, well, your daughter-in-law, okay, my daughter-in-law, which is worse, because you shouldn't be interfering. That's what I think. Okay, you, mother-in-law should never interfere. You should only interfere in your own daughter. And and this kid's got a girlfriend. That's another letter, he's, I think. He's, <laughs> he's probably a, for that. he's probably an amazing kid. You know, it, it, there's just no way in the world that we aren't destroying our kids. So this kid will end up listening, the mother will end up listening, they'll grow up with all sorts of pressures, issue. and very quietly, without you knowing, they'll start popping pills, having alcohol to an extreme, and covering it up so you can't see it. But the fat you can see, so you're picking on that. Give them some love. Oh, so many beautiful, I used to be really like this when I was a little boy. Look at this, I'm only like this. <laughs> <laughs> and you're love, gorgeous. love. It's how we treat each other. Love, respect, manners. Get off this kid's case, please. Feed him plenty of love, Vincenzo says, he ought to know. And when we come back tomorrow, this bloke is writing into us because he feels like he's been babysitting his girlfriend. He's been in a relationship Ooh. for three Ooh, years. Ooh, when we come back, more of Sweet and Sour. Don't go away. I'm coming back tomorrow. You know, uh, I've been a big fan of Gary Glitter for many years. Uh, I've also enjoyed the work of Joni Mitchell. Were those two ever to get together and make a child, they'd make Gary Mitchell. I love Gary Mitchell, and you should too, sweet and sour. What are we doing? We're <laughs> that was a great count in. Thank you, Kesky. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. Hello, Sweet and Sour. She's a really lovely girl, well-meaning and happy most of the time. We've been together almost three years, so I know her pretty well. She's 29, so her character is well and truly set. Here's the reason for my writing to you guys. I think instead of her boyfriend, she treats me as her nanny or her surrogate father. I'm a pretty busy bloke, and by nature I like to keep busy. I've noticed that I'm having trouble keeping up with my own lifestyle now and I'm thinking that my girlfriend is consuming all my spare time. I get home and help with the cooking. Fair enough, but I've always said I don't cook. I make her lunch every day and I do half of all the chores that just happen to be twice as much as I did when I was on my own. I even seem to be making her decisions. I'm the fashion consultant, the health, nutrition and exercise consultant, the career advisor and the all-round general backstop for her. I think I like uh, I think I like to think that I enrich her life enormously. I can't work out my, um, how my life has been enriched in any way, however, except I'd miss her and feel lonely if she weren't around. The other great negative is that I think she's started to take me for granted because the nagging is almost incessant and given my predisposition to keeping busy, I can't work out why she feels she has to nag. Have I won the booby prize in a raffle? I don't know whether I've been uh, a nanny all, all along, or this woman is just a product of the Y generation, and they're all wanting when it comes to life skills. Any idea what sort of relationship I have here and whether or not it's healthy? Anthony from Ellensfield in New South Wales. Vincenzo, is he babysitting? Oh, Anthony. Anthony, do her a favour and get out of her life. Crikey, <laughs> Moses. Get out of her life. <laughs> You, you, you rave about her. You used to do everything for her when you were trying to get into her pants. And now that you have, you start to find that she's nagging and she's a pain and she's the booby prize. I reckon you're the booby prize, mate. You sound like you're all into yourself and nobody else. No, Anthony, I don't like you. Anthony should get out for her sake. Yes. Come on, Nola. I love that you've just turned all that around that differently to how I was thinking. Yes, it's a very unhealthy relationship. I, I think if anyone nannies anyone in the young, then you're, you're, you're in trouble for a start. 
I don't know whether you have already nannied, always nannied her, but if that's how you're feeling, you do need to get out of it because that wouldn't be any fun for anybody. I think the Gen Hang on, he's been in it for a while. Well, yeah, and but if it's he's just feeling that she empty. started to nag. He's obviously liked that sort of stuff. But that's what before. we do. We we spin this web that we're fabulous and we get you and then we nag. Men need, <laughs> men need to, to solve problems. We're, yeah, we're problem solving. Yeah. We don't actually. It just sounds me. unhealthy. It sounds like he doesn't love her anymore. Like she's nagging. Like why is she nagging? Because she's probably not in love either. Oh, is that why you nag? I think so. Is that why women nag? No, because you know what? You know what happens? We, we, we start as these two people and then we Things change. He's smiling over there. And we down. compromise who we are he and then we he nag. Do, he claims he does too much, yet she's always nagging. I reckon he doesn't do enough. <laughs> <laughs> she could be a whinger. She could be a whinger. All right, Jules, is she a whinger? Oh, well, I'm a whinger. I think he's. Are you not? I yes, am. I am a winger. <laughs> she went, but, but you, you know winged to your mate. Yeah, I'm looking for my violin for him, you know, because I just feel like, oh, you know. Anthony, you are a bit like me. I, I am a winger. Thank you for that. Noel. So why do you win? Because I do everything in my house, don't I? I do. I, but you know what? I, I made my own bed and now I have to lie in it. I'm a control freak. I don't think anyone else does it like I do. And and I, that's it. When I'm you say you now. do everything, I do the cooking. I do the cleaning. If someone does something, I kind of my husband makes the bed. I kind of make sure because he hasn't done it quite right. You're a control freak. I'm mm -hmm. a control freak, but I think he is. He's yeah, doing he sounds everything. like a control freak as well. He's like me. So yeah. you know what? It's fine. So you yeah. nag because you're I a don't control nag. freak. I don't nag. Don't I nag. win. She wins. She I don't nag. nag. Is there I a win. Uh, Luke, is there a difference? I yes. don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> And I gotta tell you, like, I, I kind of feel for this guy because I was in a similar position that, you know, I was with a girl who, uh, you know, was constantly like at everything she had to run past me. It was like, oh, which of these is my cereal? Is this appropriate to wear to work? Is it safe to cross the road? And eventually I just had to snap and say, look, honey, I know that you're blind, but you gotta make a decision for yourself every now and then. <laughs> Sadly, she was hit by a car and died a few hours later. But I think it's right to stand up and, and, and be strong with them. <laughs> You're a shocker. Do you like this letter to give away the pair of limited edition sunnies, courtesy of Alon Trees and Aussie Optical? I think you some, don't you? Because I actually think they just need to be honest, these two, and, yeah. and go into You like this letter? Yeah, well... But as long as he doesn't give the sunglasses to her. you got yeah. no control over the sunnies once you they're dished would, out. You'd give yours because Vincenzo, you're Vincenzo, do you like this? You're the birthday boy tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can wear the sunglasses. He'll match her thing. She's blind. She's got her own sunglasses. <laughs> That's right. All right, company, coming out to Anthony of Ellensfield, New South Wales. A pair of limited edition sunnies, courtesy of a long treat. Good night, birthday boy. Have a great day tomorrow. Thank you very, very much. Terrific to have you on the, on the show Woo! on your birthday eve. <laughs> 21 tomorrow. And enjoy down south. Oh, yes. Please. And where are you travelling to again? <laughs> <laughs> Don't follow me. <laughs> <laughs> we won't. Great to have you here, mate. Lovely to be here. Do you want to sing happy Harry. birthday to no, him? No, I didn't. You cut me off. I didn't even get into it. <laughs> but, you know, it's I know, only, I know, it's only I a half know, hour I show. I know, I know, I know. I will drag. Is she always like this? Always. Always. Like do you nag her? I don't nag her. No. Yeah, do you, you, win you whinge to her? Uh, I haven't yeah. done. She tells me her real feelings. That's not whinging, though. No, no it's not whinging. I only whinge to my family. It's another letter, I think. Loki? Make sure you look after your little daughter, mate. I <laughs> always do. All right, mate. Great to have you on the show. Can you mob come back next week? Sure. Vincenzo, yeah. you, hey, can, you right. can tell us uh, what your birthday was like. All right? Stunning. <laughs> he knows what it's going to be <laughs> like. If you tune in next week now, he already told us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank all of our wonderful panellists. Thank our terrific crew. And thanks for having hey. us at home tonight, Australia. Good night. Bye-bye.